Hi guys, so welcome to part two of this Animation Basics and After Effects for Science Communication. Uh, and what we're going to touch on today are some of the absolute sort of cornerstones of animation and After Effects, which is the use of keyframes. Uh, so without going into the theory of it, because um, there's so many great YouTube videos out there that explain in detail what keyframes are, we can essentially think of keyframes as the start and end points of a particular animation whether that be a change in opacity, whether that be a change in position, whether it be the start and end points of a scaling factor that's applied to a particular object, the keyframes themselves are the start and end points in between which animation occurs. So as I said, without focusing on the theory, I'm just gonna go into demonstrating exactly how we can use keyframes uh, to change the position, scale, opacity of different objects within After Effects. And this is really how all animation occurs in After Effects. So I've already got preloaded in here a solid background color, a cyan solid background color there, uh, and loads of objects just there. So we've got a couple of bubbles, we've got a test tube, a flask. And what we're gonna really do to demonstrate how keyframes work is to animate a couple of these objects within this scene. And so we're gonna start off with this large bubble here. And if I select this large bubble in our contents pane here, see it selects, I can deselect and then select the large bubble. And if we just come over here and select this little drop down arrow, we'll see that we've got a few options. Now, within our options, we've got scale, rotation, opacity, position, and all of these are things that we can change and apply keyframes to in order to create some animation within our scene. So if we just zoom out again a little bit there, what we're first gonna do is just change the opacity of this bubble. So if we click, I'm sorry, if we make sure the time slider is back to zero and we click this stopwatch, that lays down our first keyframe. And what you should have seen there is a small blue diamond appear here. This is our keyframe. So if we zoom back out again, move our time slider across to three seconds. And then if we hit this little diamond symbol over here again, this lays down our second keyframe. See. Our second keyframe has now been laid down here. And so effectively what these two keyframes are doing is saying this one at zero is the start of our animation and this one at three seconds is the end of our particular animation. And if we scroll the time slider, we notice that at this stage nothing actually happens. And the reason for that is because the opacity is 100% at zero seconds and it's also 100% at three seconds. So we're not actually animating, there's no change in between these two keyframes. And so if we go back to zero seconds, we select our first keyframe and we scroll this 100% opacity level down to zero. And now if we move our time slider across to three seconds, if I deselect it, we can see it a little bit clearer. So we can see that in between those three seconds, the opacity changes from 0% all the way up to 100%. So the first keyframe represents 0%, and as we go through the three seconds in a linear fashion, the opacity increases to 100%. So exactly the same process of applying keyframes uh, exists for changing the position of a particular object. So if we go all the way back to zero, we'll notice that it disappears again, so our opacity is at zero. But this time we want to change the actual position of this bubble over that three second period. So if we select position here, still underneath our first flask large bubble here, and we lay down our first keyframe, this is the position in X and Y space at zero seconds for that object. Now if we scroll across, we see our first keyframe there. If we scroll across to three seconds and hold the shift key so it snaps to that next keyframe, so snap. And then we lay down our second keyframe by clicking this little button here. Note the additional diamond that's now appeared just here, but this time it's appeared in the position row, not in the opacity row. And then if we change this dimension, we can actually move the bubble upwards to wherever we want it to come to rest at three seconds. And so now, because we've got opacity keyframes here, and we've got position keyframes here, for the same object, over this first three seconds, if we deselect so we can see what's happening and slowly move this time slider back, we'll see that over those three seconds, this object both changes in opacity and position. So we can see it rises up to three seconds, but when we reach three seconds, no additional change happens as we go along the time slider. 
because we've only set two keyframes, a start and an end. So if we come all the way back to the beginning again, and now we, this time we're going to look at the scale function. And so exactly as before, we're back at zero seconds. We're going to click our first stopwatch to lay down our first keyframe. We're going to scroll across. Notice the animation still occurs. Click shift and snap to these keyframes. So this just means that all of the keyframes that we're laying down are absolutely aligned in time. And then we're going to click this little diamond symbol over here to lay down our next keyframe. And for our scale, we're just going to scrub this slider across to whatever we want it to increase to. It doesn't really matter what this stage, it's just to demonstrate the increase in scale. And so now if we script, go back to zero, click off our animation and, and drag it slowly across, we notice that the opacity changes over three seconds, the position changes, and so too does the scale. In fact, we can then come back and modify this particular keyframe for scale if we don't think that it's increasing enough and we can drag it even further over to make it even larger, just a bit more pronounced. And then if we click off, drag our time slider back to the beginning, just scrub along, we can see how it increases in scale, a change in position and a change in opacity across these three seconds. And so hopefully what this is demonstrating is that the keyframes indicate the start and end of a transition between two different points, whether that's a change in opacity, position, scale, rotation, there's loads of different things. This is the underlying basics upon which all animation occurs in After Effects. And of course, these don't have to occur but all between three seconds. For example, we could have the position changing over three seconds and the opacity changing over three seconds, but we could have the scale taking slightly longer. And so we could move this last keyframe across to roughly five seconds. So if we move the time slider over, we can see it's about five seconds there. And so now we have five seconds worth of animation where the opacity and the position change in the first three seconds, but between three and five seconds, the scale continues to increase. And that's because the scale keyframe starts at zero and ends at five seconds, whereas the position and opacity keyframe start at zero and end at three seconds. And so between the combination of scale, opacity and position, you can actually create quite sophisticated and interesting looking animations just with modifying these three parameters over time. And of course you can add additional keyframes in over time. So once it's at five seconds, we could then, for example, have it stall there for a little while. So we can place another keyframe for scale just so that it remains the same scale between these two periods. But then afterwards, we could have it shrink back down again. So if we move our time slider across to eight seconds, and then we move our scale slider all the way down to zero, and you'll notice this time that we moved our time slider from this keyframe over to here and then changed the scale parameter here and it automatically placed a keyframe down here for us. So now we have an eight second animation where the opacity and the position of this bubble increases in the first three seconds. Then in the next two seconds, the scale continues to increase. Then for roughly a second, it stays about the same. There's no sort of more animation. And then for the next couple of seconds, the bubble decreases in size. And so at the moment, the transition between all of these keyframes is linear. But what we can do to add a little bit more sort of dynamism to the transitions over time between keyframes is we can highlight all of our keyframes. And if we right click, we can go keyframe assistant and we can select easy ease. And this just adds a little bit of ad additional motion to the beginning and the end of each keyframe. And so if we come back to the beginning and we press spacebar, we'll notice that it's no longer a linear interpolation between those two keyframes or between all the keyframes. And generally speaking, I find that I set most of my keyframes to easy ease. It just makes it little, look a little bit more professional. It just makes it look a little bit less clunky as all of the animations are smoother between the keyframes. And so that's a very brief introduction to keyframes and how we can use position, scale and opacity variables to change and animate particular objects over time using keyframes.
And so obviously I'll go into a lot more detail of this uh, in other episodes, but I hope that was a sort of useful introduction. Um, don't forget to subscribe and like, and look forward to seeing you shortly. Cheers.